ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Green, Mr. Coat, Mr. Kleider. It's fantastic to be here, to see so many people. I understood you're from 46 countries, and that's fantastic. A huge event, and I really hope that this will lead to huge results and agreements. Only the fact that you were talking with each other after the speech, or during the speech of Mr. Code was a good example of networking. Welcome to the Netherlands, welcome to Amsterdam. And of course Dutch people know it, but um, you maybe are aware of Amsterdam that was, let's say, a very important city in the 17th century. In those days it was the financial capital in the world. And today you can see still the heritage of that time. And if you're interested in Amsterdam, I can recommend you a beautiful book written by an American author, Russell Shorthauer. The title of the book is Amsterdam. And in that book, you can read that it was not only the 17th century, already before that time, Amsterdam had a huge significance, and also in the centuries afterwards. And before Russell Shorthauer wrote the book, Amsterdam, he wrote another book, The Island at the Center of the World, and that was about Manhattan, and with the Dutch influence. Beautiful book, and also can recommend that book. I will really hope that you have a great time here in the Netherlands. In my short introduction, I would like to make three points. First, I would like to give some political observations around climate change. My second point uh, has to do with the awareness of the fact that we live in an age of transition. And the third point is the necessity to act. Do you agree with these three points? It's okay? Happy with it? Thank you very much. This was a moment of interaction in my speech. <laughs> First, some political observations. When I was Prime Minister, I received an invitation to introduce Al Gore because of the release of his film, An Inconvenient Truth. And it attracted a lot of attention. People became aware of the fact, what are the risks on this planet? And for example, you could see in that film the ice caps in the Alps, pictures from 100 years ago and now. And then you can see that these ice caps partly disappeared 100 years ago and now. A few years later, I saw another film, Chasing Ice, a film of a cameraman who installed cameras and ice in Greenland and Alaska. And every month, he took a picture. And if you put all these pictures behind each other, then you can see Chasing Ice. Parts of ice as big as Manhattan, but twice or three times as high, disappeared, not 100 years ago and now, but between 2006 and 2009. In my time, I must say the best moment I had regarding the international cooperation was the G20 meeting in March in London, 2009. After the financial crisis started, we said we need each other to find a new financial architecture. Let's make a success of the WTO negotiations, the free trade arrangements and let's make a success of Copenhagen. And then we had Copenhagen, the climate summit. I still remember it. When I arrived there on Thursday afternoon, I received a briefing of our Minister of Environment. And then she said, it's only about the procedure of the United Nations, no progress, and we're disappointed. Of course, we have made decisions uh, about financing the climate uh, policy, but in fact, the results of Copenhagen were disappointing. China, the US, were not willing to work on international binding agreements. That was bad. I still remember the fact that we had a dinner in the palace of the Queen of Denmark. And I thought, the whole world is watching us, all the heads of government, we have seen the preparations, but in fact, the results were disappointing. That was bad. I've been before in that palace. My first international conference was there. And I still remember we received a dress code, black suit. And one prime minister received the dress code, black tie. And I said to him, what are you doing? Yeah, he said already three people asked me to get a glass of wine. People thought he was a waiter. So always take into account your dress code. That was Paris 2009. And now we've had Paris last year in December. And when you saw the end of that conference, you saw happy faces, people enthusiastic about it. I think there has been good results. Binding agreements on the procedures, the awareness has increased. The role of the private sector has been underlined, and I think it's really necessary to do it. And of course, there are people worldwide who say, well, we've always had the, cha the, the changes in, 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 in temperature on this climate. And some people try to deny the fact 
that the climate issues are man-made. I was in Singapore in September. And some events could not take place possibly because of the haze. The whole air was polluted because of the burning of palm trees on Sumatra. That's man-made. When you're walking around in China, one day walking around is the equivalent of smoking 40 cigarettes. That's man-made. The plastic soup in the oceans is man-made. Let's be honest. And therefore, I'm happy with the results of, uh, of Paris. But that was a conference with conclusions. The question is not, did we have a good conference? The question is, what will happen with the implementation and the follow-up? And because of that reason, I'm so happy with this conference. And this brings me to my second point. We are living in a, an age of transition. Talking about the new economy, we talk about 3D printing, the Internet of Things, robotics. These are the key elements. We live in a time of radical change. But it also counts for the big issues that are on the agenda today. We talk about climate change. We talk about energy. We talk about migration. We talk about human rights. We talk about socio-economic development. These are not separate issues. These issues are interconnected, are interwoven. And you have to be aware of the connection between these different elements. And talk about transition that also counts for the world of energy. We must have a low-carbon society. We cannot go on with the production of coal and so on. The replacement of coal by gas helps, but it's not enough. The future will be the future of the renewables. Let me ask you, who of you occupies a waka waka? Well, CEO, there is room for some improvements. That's my waka waka. Last year I had a presentation in Belgium, also the Queen was there. And I explained why a waka was so important, because it's a solar powered device. And I think this is a beautiful example of a changing world. Millions of people die because of kerosene lamps. If you could replace all the kerosene lamps by waka wakas or equivalents of that, it would make a difference. This is an example of the age of transition. We need the renewables. And it counts for everyone in this world. And therefore, it's so important to talk about what's happening in Asia and Africa. In Latin America, also my company is supporting the initiative of Waka Waka. And I'm glad, Ms. Green, you are the CEO of this important organization. And I see happy face, but also you can see the progress in your activities, and that's fantastic. An increase of turnover, more people are using it, it's really fantastic. So I wish you a lot of success. Talking about the change of transition, the, 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 the era of transition, ladies and gentlemen, I think the role for business is changing rapidly. Milton Friedman told in 1970, the business of business is business. And today, we talk in terms of Michael Porter creating shared value. A company must generate economic value and at the same time societal value. It's about new alliances. It's about whole value chain, stakeholder dialogue. It's about long-term thinking. And I think there's a new episode in the role of businesses regarding the big issues of today. I'm working in the business sector now after my life in politics. I discovered there's life after politics. I'm happy to be active in the business sector, as you are. But it's not business as usual. The discussion about economic growth has changed. In time when I was a student here in Amsterdam, we had a club of Rome, limits to growth. Today, it's about sustainable growth. In earlier days, corporate social responsibility was something extra, and today, it's about how can you integrate sustainability into your business model and to, into your business strategy. That has changed. You, we need new business models. That's the reality. Today we talk about the business case. Uh, sustainability can be profitable, but you have to work for it. You have to fight for it. You must be creative. And we talk about measurement and reporting. It must be an honest story. If a company is telling, we do a lot in the sphere of sustainability, the question will be, and what are you doing? What are you doing regarding the reducing of C2 emissions, human rights issues, energy issues, etc. It must be an honest story. Key performance indicators, life cycle analysis, and integrated reporting. That is the reality for business today. What I notice in the financial sector is that banks, in any case in this country, are talking about what's our role. In which products do we and projects do we invest? What about client acceptance? Is CSR on the agenda? or not, pension funds are changing their policy regarding investments. 
and is also linked to sustainability issues, and I'm happy with that. But much more has to be done. Two weeks ago, I attended a conference of VBDO, that's an organization in the Netherlands for investors in sustainable development. And at this moment, in my country, only 1.7% of the total amount of investments has to do with impact investing. So when we talk about Paris, climate change, the question is, what can we really achieve? How can we make the difference? How can we be practical? And when Nano Kleitop invited me to speak here, I was very enthusiastic about this conference, Making Solar Bankable. It's an example of the fact that we have to change things. We have to be aware of the big issues of today, of climate change, and we have to act. And it brings me to my third point, the necessity to act. When I see you all here, I only would like to make one remark. And the remark is, we need you. There are concepts around solar energy. But the question is, how can we speed up development? How can we speed up the use of solar energy? How can we speed up the use of solar energy in all parts of the world, especially in the emerging markets? And I think the awareness is there. We've had a film of Al Gore. Businesses know that they have to act regarding sustainability issues. But the question is, what can we really do to speed up developments? And that's exactly what's here on the agenda. We can enlighten the world when we are doing the right things. And that's on the agenda here. We need you. I'm happy with Solar Plaza and FMO that you've taken the initiative to organize this event. Not just to organize an event, this will be catalyst in new networks, in joint ventures, in new investment schemes, in new projects. It's not enough if you would have a nice conference and you know each other. The question will be to which projects will it lead? How can we speed up the developments? That's what you can see. I already mentioned my company. In many countries in the world, we have every year the ele Entrepreneur of the Year election. And it's also a global event. That's organized for 50 years in Monaco. 60 countries, 60 entrepreneurs of the years, and we have a global winner. I attended that meeting last year in June, and I was very enthusiastic to have been there, not because of Monaco, but because of one question that was asked to all the CEOs. And that was not a question, how is it with your turnover? What about your profits? The key question to all those CEOs who were there was, what's your legacy? How are you contributing to finding solutions for the global issues of today? What's your legacy? And I think this conference is an example of raising that question. What's your legacy toward a global society, the big issues? We know what the vulnerabilities are worldwide. We know everything about the risks of climate change. We all know that we have to act. We cannot wait any longer. We have to speed up developments. And we have to be very practical. I really hope that this conference will be very successful. When Mr. Clayton invited him, he said, oh, I expect about 200 people. Well, we've seen the results, much more. It's happening now. It's fantastic. We have a moderator with your background and also your role. That's, that's fantastic. But this conference must be successful, not just because of the conference, but because of the steps that can be taken afterwards. I wish you a very good conference. I wish you good luck with all your efforts to do the right things for society, that they lead to a lot of practical dimensions and, uh, and concrete steps. And I hope you'll enjoy Amsterdam also a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a great conference and a lot of success. Thank you very much.